giant quiffist to you all, ladies and gentlemen. God, it is Friday once again, and what a tremendous day I have had. We've not been able to stream today, which is always a bummer because I, I like what I do. It's fun. It's really good. Uh, we did not get to do that, but I spent the day in my kids' school watching all the Christmas plays featuring my children, and it was good. It was pure. It was wholesome. It was good, and they trapped every family in there, making all this all the plays staggered in between other classes so that the audience was full and nobody was allowed to leave. <laughs> Everybody had to make sure they were there and watch the other kids in the play and uh, have fun with it. But it was good. It was a hell of a day. And along the way home, along the way home, my wife said, well, why don't we stop and have a little bit of lunch? And then she told me that she's taking me to a surprise night out tonight for my birthday. My birthday is not till next week, but I'm super busy on my birthday. So she has planned something that is happening this evening, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. Uh, it should be fun. She always plans something fun for my birthday because I am a horrible person to sort a birthday out for because I don't particularly want anything. Um, my hobbies are gaming, and I do that for work, so I tend to have everything I want. <laughs> so I don't envy her the task. I don't envy her the task that she needs to sort out birthdays every year. Same. It's like, I might have all the stuff I want. I don't know. Uh, what are you going to get me? She can get me a 3090. That would be nice. She could go and pick up a 39 for me. That would be sweet. That would be golden. That would be excellent, wouldn't it? That would be fantastic. But that's probably not going to happen. Although she has bought me a GPU in the past. It's probably not going to be the case. But we'll see. It should be a fun night. 3080i is good. She's not buying me a GPU. I think she's taking me out somewhere. Uh, she's uh, arranged. My, my kids are now going to stay at my mother's. She's sorting that out. So there's no children around in my life. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. Happy birthday. It's next week. My birthday is next Friday. Along with next week, Endwalker. Most of you have finished Endwalker now. The MSQ at least. We're happy. We're smiley. The queues are dying down again, and I now feel it is safe to return. So we will indeed be returning. On Monday, we will be getting on to the Stormblood questline. Uh, it has been an arduous time not playing, because I really, really, really do want to play. As you've seen on YouTube, I am very much engaged with the FF14 storylines. They're fantastic. They're so good, unlike some others. And... I've been missing it. I've been missing it a hell of a lot. But not that we didn't have fun with uh, our first steps into Minecraft this week. Uh, we set the Minecraft challenge of defeating all the brand new content. Uh, and we did it. The Wither was crushed and defeated yesterday. Summoned and defeated. And I lost all my armor falling into the void. But, you know, that's just the way things go. Sometimes you got to be a cheating Andy. Uh, but we have a lovely little mini community server up on Minecraft. And it was great. I haven't played it since 2016 for like a week. Uh, it was a big learning experience, super fun, super exciting, as well as the uh, Warframe story that we're going to be checking out as well. Lots of stuff going on as we approach Christmas, and we'll have more details on that, as well as a nice announcement for what we're doing on New Year's Eve. You will get that on Monday. Uh, we're having a big celebration. We are going to have a wonderful celebration with everybody over New Year's, so watch for details on that on Monday. Should be all good. Any crafters? Any crafters around? Or anybody building traps in the floor that leads to endless surprising chicken spawns? All that kind of stuff. Now then, let's go to drama, because that's why you guys are here. I have a story in front of me that Bex has warned me is one that needs to be read. It is a story that is likely to drive me around the fucking bend, but she promises that it is absolutely worthwhile. And I've read the title because of course I have. I have it open in front of me and <laughs> I'm already a little angry. Now, I don't think I can fit this entire title in, uh, but we'll try. Uh, being in hospital... is not a valid reason see it's too long uh let's change it to in hospital i'm changing this question mark but raid though i'm guessing this is about a raid i'm guessing this title might be massively incorrect uh i'm basing it the actual title is being in the hospital is not a valid reason for absence that is the name of this tale this journey we are about to go on so i'm guessing it's about somebody who's in hospital and their raid leader was like no <laughs> but what of the raid perhaps they were a tank we can't even play if you're not here uh so i'm guessing that's what it's about if i'm wrong i apologize but uh i'm obviously guessing because i do not know what is in this tale 
Uh, our wonderful stars will be ben Belshan, Kenethar, Wazin, and Hark. Wonderful website supporters. Thank you very much for making the show possible. You guys are the best. You guys are the best. Bumph! Okay. Uh, hands chopped off, minus 50 DKP. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Do we need a guild name? Uh, does not look like we need a guild name. Uh, okay. Are, 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 we, are we strapped in? <laughs> I think the guilty hammers will need to be ready for this one because I am already just want to label somebody as guilty. Uh, let's get ready. <gasps> Ahoy, preacher! Three hearts. I'm writing to you from inside the Endwalker queue. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, yes. The perpetual agony that many people have spent their time in this week. So while reading this, you can rest assured I've ended up in greener pastures. This story takes place, though, of course, in World of Warcraft. Spanning from the start of Legion all the way until the end of Battle for Azeroth. Okay, we've got some time to cover here. With a tiny little cameo in the Shadowlands at the end. I, was, I wish to say the Copian was strong with me. Uh, as, it, as it is with us all. Before I start my tale, I do just want to thank you for all your videos over the years, especially all the drama time. For how long I've been following, you've become a seriously big part of my life. Same. I talk to you guys more than I talk to my family. And one day, I hope to get the opportunity to meet you at PreachCon. It's in August. It's in August. Assuming that the COVID doesn't spike again. Because I'm supposed to be taking my first vacation in three years in February. I'm supposed to go into Mexico for a week. And it looks like it's going to be cancelled. Son of a bitch. And if we have to cancel PreachCon again, I'm going to be really fucking pissed off. Like really really angry so you know let's all work, pull together and make this happen okay team let's let's make this happen uh, but anyway here is the story of myself we do need a guild name there it is okay we do need a guild name uh i'm starting to think this covid situation is kind of a pain in the ass it is isn't it it is isn't it look we're not stopping the race to world first again that's not happening that's not happening the race to world first must go ahead it must go ahead we need a guild name for these uh the wonderful people come on live audience the broken hip bones mm, the q lovers the anti-vaxxers oh god no uh the, COVID the healthcare providers we'll go with the nhs let's go with the nhs i like the nhs it's very nice we'll go with the nhs i like that <clears throat> Some very minor details have been changed to further protect the privacy of some people. So if you recognize this story, rest assured, it definitely is not about you. The story begins, like so many tales, at the start of Legion. I had just ended up guildless, like so many others. My previous guild disbanded because I, as the off-tank, I fucking knew it was going to be a tank. I fucking knew it. I, as the off-tank, wanted to re-roll a Guardian Druid for Emerald Nightmare. Why? What the fuck? <laughs> Why would you do that? Okay. And my guild leader had a mental breakdown over it. Eventually deciding that the game could no longer be fun for him, and he burned my guild to the ground. I swear to you now, Mike, it was literally all because I wanted to play Guardian. <laughs> I wish I could tell you something to make this make more sense. But I wasn't completely alone. As in this guild, I had made two friends, Belshan and Kenethal, who still quite liked me even after my re-rolling and wanted to have me along for things. You're a tank, dude. Of course you made friends. Are you fucking kidding me? You want a tank? We'll be your friend. They wanted to continue raiding. So we all separated for a while and I went into pug hell as a Pandaran female Windwalker monk. I cringe to this day. Okay. Oh, did you want to re-roll away from Guardian? Oh, no. I wanted to re-roll a Guardian Druid for Emerald Nightmare. I don't know how to take that sentence. It says, I, as the off-tank, wanted to re-roll a Guardian Druid. It sounds to me like you wanted to become a Guardian, but then when you had the choice, you started pugging as a Windwalker. So, I'm not sure. However, a little bit of hope came at the start of the Nighthold. As my friends messaged me some feelers through the blessed Facebook of our former guild. Belshin had the moderator rights, uh, moderator rights of our guild Facebook. So after our guild collapsed, he just kicked the GM and we continued like normal over there. Belshin said that he finally, after many moons of searching, had found a good guild. And not just any guild. A mythic raiding guild. And that he recommended me extensively. And if I wanted in, a trial was waiting for me. I couldn't believe it. Me. Me, 
A heroic scumbag becoming a mythic raider? Was I good enough? I don't know. I had never stepped foot inside a mythic raid. What was it like in there? How hard could it be? I was so, so ready for this moment. And the next day, I had ended up in an interview with the GM of this mythic guild. I was fangirling so hard. I was worried I would explode. I didn't know how painfully common mythic guilds were. So in my mind, I was basically joining method. <laughs> Even though I wasn't. The NHS wasn't a bad second choice, I thought. So let's meet Wazin, the GM of the NHS. We ended up in a Discord call, which made me a little nervous. I had never stepped up to this level of professionalism where we needed to have a conversation with a real-life person before I could even join the guild. I had never, to that day, even used Discord before. But I got invited to the server and my eyes sparkled like a kid in a candy shop. There were so many channels. Every category you could imagine. General, memes, raiding talk, strategy, mythic plus specific stuff, and an entire recruitment channel. Coming from my main form of outer, outer game communication, Facebook, this was really impressive. So well organized. I was told by the GM to hop into one of the voice channels, and as soon as I did, I was taken down to a secret channel that I couldn't even see. A voice channel exclusively for recruitment interviews i actually said irl oh bless your heart wow <laughs> wow i sat up straight prepared myself the interview began hail friend i swear to you that's how he started and welcome to the nhs your friend belshin has told me a lot about you it was so formal. I was astonished. I was made a little shy by the thought of people talking about me when I wasn't even there. What could they have said? From there, we exchanged pleasantries before Wazin asked me about my previous raid experience. He seemed relatively unbothered by my lack of good progress. You'd think the whole never really touch this thing might have been a deal breaker for someone recruiting for mythic raiding. But apparently not. He began talking about something called logs. And how mine were apparently good logs. I didn't know what he was talking about. I played stupid. Yeah. Great logs. The best. I always care about my logs. Very good logs. He then explained to me, of course, the rules of the guild. Here. At the NHS. We believe in the team before all else. Everything we do is as a team. And we will never do anything to hurt a member of the team. He said three team three times in one sentence. I remember thinking about it as he said it. And as a team, we must work together to down each and every boss. So let me now bestow upon you the rules of the NHS. Rule number one. You must always look for the best in another member of the team and will never judge them unjustly. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> you must always look for the best in another member of the team and will never judge them unjustly. Okay. Two. You must always strive to do your best for not yourself, but for the team. Even at the sacrifice of personal DPS. Three, to prevent drama, any disputes are reported directly to the guild master and are never to be shared in public. <laughs> okay. Four, oh, there's more rules. Oh, there's more rules. Okay. Four, in order to facilitate a cohesive team that works together through thick and thin, you cannot make clicks and exclude anyone from anything. Mythic plus groups are for all the guilds to share in. And if you keep them to yourself, it will only hurt the team. Well, there you go. This is mythic quality stuff now. All right. No drama in public. Sometimes you must sacrifice DPS. 
and you're not allowed to make little intra groups. All right, not too bad. Sad it has to be stated as actual specific rules, but there it is. I agreed to all these terms easily. Hell, I didn't even know a single member of the guild. How could I form a click? And he asked me for any questions of my own, so which I meekly and nervously sputtered out. Uh, so um, I'm a little worried. I won't be able to keep up immediately. Is there a rule on how many mistakes people can make before they get benched? To which he confidently replied, We do not believe in benching members of our team. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. We can only become stronger if we are together as one. <sighs> oh, sweet Jesus. All right. If they have exactly 20 members. How does that work? Do they have exactly 20 members? Because somebody's getting benched. Hmm. Satisfied with this response, meaning I wouldn't get benched, I excitedly looked forward to my trial. He told me I was to be assigned Belshan as the one who would go over loot rules and the structure of the trial, and I was required to report using in-game mail... <laughs> Oh no. I was required to report using the in-game mail system to Belshan as my sponsor every three days during my trial, letting him know what I had done and my thoughts on the guild. This trial process was to last no more and no less than two months. Alongside reporting to my role officer at least once a week, I was so impressed by how organized they were. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, man. <laughs> Dear Loz, you bald cunt. Love preach. Send. <laughs> Send. I was so impressed by how formal and organized everything was. And I adored it all. <laughs> I adore Oh, she loves it. She loves it. We're stepping up into the big leagues. No, it's fine. We're stepping up into the big leagues. It's gonna be fine. Red flags? Yeah, a little bit. As soon as the interview was over, I went to talk to my friend and now sponsor, Belshan. Talked to him about what I should be reporting to him. To which he responded, If you send me a fucking in-game mail, I will slap you IRL. It's fucking stupid. Don't do that. Round of applause for Belshan. Round of applause for Belshan. What a legend. <laughs> I swear to you now, you send me a fucking in-game mail, I will find you and I will slap you IRL. <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> We already... <laughs> oh, this is genius. We already have a copy and pasted letter that we set up to send to the GM should he ever ask us. <laughs> so I don't care what you actually get up to. Just don't be a dick. Oh my God. The officers were like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll fucking, we'll do the in-game mail thing. All right, wanker. No, I don't think so. He also went over the trial structure. <clears throat> okay, this should be great. For a span of two weeks, you're considered a new trial and receive two less levels of loot prior. Oh, no. What the fuck does this mean? Oh, strap in, lads. This is getting... Oh, my God. This this is going to get ugly. This is going to get really fucking ugly real quick. Okay. All right. For the span of two weeks, you're considered a new trial. You receive two less levels of loot priority. More on this later, it says here in parentheses. After that two-week period, if your performance is good enough, you'll be promoted to current trial. Okay, so you go from new trial to current trial, where you get back one level of loot priority. After the two-month trial period of satisfactory rating, you will be officially inducted into the guild and given guardian rank during one of the two-hour-long guild meetings, which they have every month. Go and fuck yourself. Are you for real? Go and fuck yourself. Two hour long guild meeting? About what? What are we talking about? Oh my god. No. <clears throat> okay. Now, Mike, your ears probably pricked at the loot system. It did. <laughs> it did. I had never heard of this before. And I'll tell you, I have never heard of this since, okay? I'm curious if you've ever encountered this before. Well, if anybody has, it is us here at Drama Time because we've seen it all, or so we like to think. We have seen it all, but, you know, we'll find out. Okay. All, let's begin. All loot was rolled. Uh-oh. Rolled. 
using a low roll system. So a one would be the best roll. And each member would roll out a different number depending on who they were and what they needed it for. All right. Okay. This. All right. This doesn't sound as bad. It's ridiculous and fucking stupid. But look, bear with me a sec. If the piece is best in slot for your main spec, so it's something you really need, you do slash roll 100 and the lowest roll wins. If the piece was non-best in slot... Oh, okay, this system is fucking terrible. If the piece is not best in slot or it is bis for your off spec, so it's decent, not great, but if I have to swap, it's the best, you do slash roll 1,000 low roll wins so some people are already you can see the problems somebody's gonna go slash roll 1000 and roll a one and they get it over a main player's bis item <laughs> so that can happen <laughs> if the piece is not best in slot for an off spec and you want it for transmog or whatever the fuck or whatever reason you want it you do slash roll 10,000 oh no okay sorry i'm this is really complicated bear with me not for transmog. If the piece is not bis for an off spec. Okay, so if it's an off spec non bis piece, you roll 10,000. If the piece is for transmog, you would roll slash roll 100,000 against the kill the, against the guild enchanter to determine if the piece was sharded or given to you for transmog. Why? Why would you disenchant it instead of giving it somebody for transmog? Alright, first of all, let's just put to the side the fact that somebody can roll for transmog and win it over a raider's bis main spec piece, from what I can gather so far. There's also a chance that if you want something for transmog, you might lose against the guild enchanter. Yikes. All right, there's more details to follow. Okay, we could be wrong, but that's what I'm getting from this so far. Then, okay, there's more to it. <laughs> Depending on your rank, you would roll one tier... Oh, these are the levels! Oh! You would roll one tier up or down, depending on your loot priority. So myself, as a new trial, had a loot priority of minus two, which is two below, right? So if I wanted a main spec bis piece, I have to use the 10,000 roll. And any off spec or non bis items for me would be slash roll 100,000. And yes, I also, using the system, have to roll against the guild enchanter to see if the piece gets sharded instead. Why? Just why? Why? That's all I have to ask is why? What are you doing? Why? Now, as you remember, it, when I, after the two weeks and I get promoted to normal trial, I have, I move my priority up to minus one. So bis items would then be rolled out of a thousand, giving me a much greater chance. Holy fuck. And guardians, which is when you're, uh, the, after the two months, have neutral loot priority, which means then... Oh shit, this, there must be people who have plus one. Is it the officers? Does the GM have plus two? So his transmog shit is like out of a hundred if he wants it. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, for sure. Some members, however, also have earned the right to have positive loot priority. Obviously, all the officers have this. So for example, Wazin, who rolling for a main spec bis piece would roll only out of ten... As they have a hidden plus one rank. Brava. Brava. Oh, that's genius. That's fucking genius. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, of course, in the original rules, dudes, there's no, you can't go higher than just being in the rank one, the neutral, for the bis piece. However, if you're a superstar, you can go to the hidden level, the cow level, where you only have to roll out of ten. This also, of course, means, as you've probably worked out, that his off-spec rolls were the same as every normal member's BIS rolls. Genius. Also, if you'd already received a BIS tip... Oh my god, it gets even more convoluted. 
Ah! <laughs> Can somebody make me a flowchart of this system? I want it on a poster. I want it on a drama time poster. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, all right, we're, we're okay. Also, if you've already received a BIS tier piece, all future tier pieces for that same week are rolled a minus one loot priority for you. Additionally, any roll can be overwritten by a member of the loot council. What? So you can just say no? If it doesn't go your way, there's a loot council as well? And they can just say fuck your roll? What? <laughs> no. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> Roll again. Roll again until it goes the way we want it to. Just keep rolling. Spam that button, baby. And pieces they designate as being extra special can be assigned by the loot council instead of using the roll system. Now, if you're curious... Oh, I'm curious. I'm so curious. I'm so curious. If you're curious, the loot council consists of one person. I don't think you understand what a council is. <laughs> and that is the GM Wazin. <laughs> I later found out that Wazin never checked what his best list is. Probably because he was allowed to roll or take whatever he wanted. <laughs> this guy's a fucking legend. Wazin's the boy. Ah, oh, nah. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you rolled a one on your bis piece. I know you rolled a one on your bis piece, but I have to take this to the loot council because that's a really nice trinket. Hold on. Yeah, loot council says you can't have it. I'll check again if you want. Nah, loot council. Sorry, it's got to go to me. It's got to go to me. <sighs> loot council has spoken. You know the rules. Loot council has spoken. That's the way it's got to be. Loot council has dealt with this before. <clears throat> So, you and your chat can probably see some issues with this system. We have noticed a few. Yeah. Yeah, we have. <clears throat> I mean, even mathematically, you guys can see that officers are 10 times more likely to win loot than normal raiders. And that non-bis upgrades for trials were often and regularly sharded instead. Also, the only time it happened, the loot council of one person stepped in... It was possible for someone to get the piece for transmog over somebody who needed it for bis. Fucking genius. This is genius. I like it. Loot council intervention. If this seems excessively complicated, it really was. And make it worse, the guild didn't even use an add-on for it. Instead, they had their off-tank manually control this system. Oh, the puppeteer at the top pulling the strings. Dance for me. Dance for me, little raiders. Dance for me. I'm sure to anybody who has mythic raided before, this system is a red flag. Understatement of the fucking century. Okay? Understatement of the fucking century. I swear to God. Understatement of the century. <sighs> well, let me give you a couple more red flags. There's more? <laughs> okay. Unsurprisingly, our guild leader and almighty loot council member and uh, Wazin is not only the guild master, but he's also the raid leader and the main tank. And of course, as we said, the sole member of the loot council. He also ran the guild with his wife. Yes! 10 out of 10. Boo yeah! Boo, there it is. <laughs> yes! She played healer. She never spoke. And was often given loot by the loot council <laughs> whenever she lost the role. Even though she had a ten times higher chance of winning. Oh, magnifique. Magnifique. Absolutely juicy. Oh, that, that's a bingo. <laughs> but all that aside, all that aside, which I now see was a big red flag. We've got to remember, we've got to remember... Our author has never stepped into this world. She probably has read forum posts. She probably has heard horror stories... This might seem like the way it works. You got to remember, I went through years of trying to get so many hundreds of thousands of people into WoW guilds. Only to discover that they were all joining cesspool guilds. My fuck up. I apologize. Uh, because they had green text. They were like, well, I'm already in a guild, Mike. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not a real guild. You know, <laughs> it gets more nuanced than that. Uh, so, you know, let's let's cut our author some slack for a moment. All that aside, all that aside, I was still pumped. I was hype. I was excited. Why? I was joining a real guild. It's a raid mythic. 
to do serious gameplay, you know? I was still super excited. I spent the days before my trials studying every single fight on every single difficulty. Practicing my rotation, learning everything I could. I even found out what logs were. <laughs> wow. Though I, I never bothered to work out how to use them to improve. You just checked your DPS score. We understand. We understand. That's literally everybody here. That's, that's all these people. Every single one of them. What pass did I get? All right. <laughs> and I eventually felt ready for my trial, which would take place in normal Nighthold. Except nobody was going to waste their time in normals. I found out that the Mythic Raiders play the game differently. They were going to trial me in Heroic. Uh, Mythic Raiders skipping normal. Shaking my damn knees, man. Shaking my damn knees. What are they like? Elitist pricks. <sighs> this made me panic. In my panic, I whispered to Belshin. I, I, I haven't even done normal. I've, I've, I've done a, the first two, but I've never seen past Spellblade. He assured me, don't worry. Don't worry, it's fine. Heroic is fucking easy. Easy. You're fine. And to my surprise, Heroic was really easy. Who were these gods behind the pixels? <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Heroic boost from a Mythic Raid guild. <laughs> I was nervous, but I was breezing through these fights. I had spent hours memorizing them leading up to this trial, so I knew what the mechanics were doing. I knew how to handle them. Probably a bit more than even Wazim by this point. They even had me do something with cakes on Triliax. I don't remember how it worked, but I remember I didn't die. You just eat the cake. <laughs> That's it. You just... This is where I realize your guild might be shit. But you know why? Getting mythic raiders who know what they're doing to actually stop DPS and eat the cake. You know, you know how many mythic guilds wipe on mechanics like that? <laughs> Do you know how many? <laughs> a lot. A lot. Ain't nobody stopping the zerg to eat a fucking cake. <laughs> Ain't nobody stopping. But I had pyroprox, bro. <laughs> you get it. Fuck you, man. It's out of blink range. I ain't going over there. You fucking... Where's the Hunters? Woohoo! Hunters! Go get it! They were smashing through everything. I was starting to get more confident. Feel good. And despite my undergeared nature, of course, I was still managing to out-DPS a couple of people. By the time we got to Bridge Boy, I was getting more and more confident and starting to use a few more of them little Windwalker tricks. Cheesing with Touch of Karma for extra damage. I did mention this to my melee officer. Before doing it, and he's, uh, Hark, the melee officer, before doing it, he said, I don't give a fuck. Do whatever you want. Just don't die. I like that guy. That's a melee, that's melee brain in a nutshell. Stop whispering me. I don't give a fuck. Just don't die. Okay? If the tanks don't like it, they'll tell you. I don't give a shit. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. Melee brain. <laughs> Just <laughs> melee, brain in, <laughs> melee brain in a nutshell. I don't give a fuck. I don't even know why I'm an officer, honestly. I'm a fucking rogue. I don't know how any of this game works at all. If I'm ever nearly dead, I just press cloak. Easy. Around the first break on my trial, something interesting happened. As people were talking about me, I hadn't actually spoken in voice comms yet because of my general social anxiety and the fact that I was a teenage girl with... I'm sorry, Mike. A new woo voice. Oh, no. So the fact I was noteworthy at all was quite weird. They kept referring to the logs, and eventually Belshin linked them to me. On Bridge Boy, I hadn't managed to just do a good pass. I was the number one Windwalker for my item level. Okay, let's put some context to this. <sighs> Mythic Guild, smashing heroic to pieces with a really undergeared Windwalker. You should have been number one if you didn't die. All right? Okay. This is a log fallacy. That's what this is. It's a fucking log fallacy. And people fall into this all the fucking time. People always fall into this trap. It's a log fallacy. Your boys are shredding that fucking place up. My other logs weren't bad too. Most of them were solidly in the purple for item level. And for the first time, I felt a bit more confident about myself. 
I started to wonder, am I a really good player? Maybe I am. Maybe this. Let her have her moment. She's had a moment. This was in fucking Nighthold. Reality time. All right. You had your moment for years. It's been years since Nighthold. You've had your fucking moment. All right. The rest of the night continued pretty well. Though I completely bombed it on Elisand, we all did. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Because that fight is fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> and as I learned, the Mythic Guild hadn't even killed it yet. Oh no, they're stuck on Heroic Elisand. Uh-oh. Whoop! Red alert! <laughs> Red alert, baby! We're stuck on we're stuck on Heroic Elisand. Oh shit. Again, maybe related to the fact that they're okay bringing someone who hasn't seen past normal Spellblade to Heroic Progression. Maybe that's one of the reasons. Maybe. Maybe. At the end of the night, I was brought into a Discord call with my sponsor, Belshin, Wazin, the Guildmaster, and they were very impressed. Wazin went on about how I'll be a great member of this team. And after Hark, the melee officer, Belshin, and I were alone, Hark told me, Listen, we're going to pass you for your trial. We're glad to see that you're not a shit recruit like other people. I was elated, overjoyed, ecstatic. I was in a guild again, doing progression, and I was doing well. But there was a little other side to things. Because I later learned, thanks to Belshin, everyone else in the guild was actually really shit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Are they a mythic guild because they killed mythic Scorperon? Technically a mythic guild? You know what I mean. I'm not shitting on anybody, but you know what I'm saying. Technically a mythic guild? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's fine, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they advertise as a mythic raid guild. It's mythic Scorperon. All right. I mean, yeah. Okay. I'll leave that there for now. We'll find out where the story goes. Mythic Nithendra. Probably not. That mind control, though. Have you ever tried counting to 10 in a raid fight? No good. The majority of people passed in the gray or green. Is that in heroic? That's 11. Sorry. <laughs> it's 11. With a handful of exceptions. Belshun's Affliction Warlock passed in the orange on most pulls. Hark's Frost DK passed the same. Another Frost DK who matched Hark... And one random rogue who was also a trial passing in the high purples. Which, counting me, left us, according to logs, six good players. And what I was told to me as 13 people who were trying their best. Oh, that's polite. Okay. <laughs> we have 13 people who are trying their best. That's very politically correct, isn't it? That's, that's fantastic. 13 people who are trying their best. That was fine, though. For me, that was fine. And after a small amount of time, progress continued. Progress continued. We started to clear content. I did have a notable issue, though, which was that I started in this guild very undergeared. And I'm not getting any gear. You Is this my... Fuck this guild. Is this why Master Looter was gone? Fuck y'all. During my raid... Mathematically, of course, remembering the loot system, my best in slot rolls were 1,000 times less likely to win than a normal Raiders. So I struggled to get more than a few heroic pieces. This was mitigated by the fact that I played World of Warcraft day and fucking night. I had Bis Legos. I don't know how my education didn't suffer, but it didn't. So I was invited to another Discord server. A separate... Oh no, this is breaking the rules. A secret Discord server for the people with good passes. That's breaking the rules. That's breaking the rules. You're not allowed. No, that's against the rules. You, you, what about the team? You're crushing the team. Inside the hidden chambers within the guild, they told me since... The loot rules in our guild are bullshit. They were going to boost me in Mythic Plus and gear me the fuck out. Now, you could say what you will about the 10 total Windwalker players. 
Were Wind, was Windwalker shit in Nighthold? I honestly can't remember. Was it bad? We had a Windwalker. No, they were pretty good. They were pretty good, right? Yeah, Mentor was our Windwalker at the time. Yeah, he was Poggers. Yeah, they were all right. They could pop off in a few fights. They, like, soloed uh, Varimatras in uh, Mythic. You know, in that intermission phase, we had to kill all the things. Like, Windwalkers, like, smashed that to pieces. They were well good. Okay. <clears throat> now, you can say what you want about the 10 total Windwalker players. We may be odd. We may be playing the worst non-survival melee. We may have a class that physically doesn't work correctly. But we did have one thing. We could smash the fuck out of Mythic Plus. Nobody, save Demon Hunters, could even touch a Windwalker's exponentially awesome spinning crane kick. <laughs> and what's more, Windwalker is a spec that physically doesn't work correctly. And along my journey studying Windwalker, I came across an obscure YouTube channel which documented an interesting little trick. Storm, Earth, and Fire. The Windwalker DPS cooldown, which, as we all know, has always worked correctly. Windwalker's where you at. Number one cooldown. It has some very interesting little quirks. As those little spirits are dashing around doing their thing. And adorably, it was possible, you know. It was possible to put your spirits in an animation lock with different spells. Preventing them from actually returning when they were supposed to return. Hmm. Interesting. While in this state, they'll still copy your abilities, but won't have the damage reduction debuff they normally have. And if done correctly, the last cast of Storm, Earth, and Fire deals like 300% of its normal damage. The catch was, this would only, like, serve a tick for like a fifth of a second. And was different for each spell. But using this knowledge, similar to the Mexican Blood Tap, remember that, that old chestnut from back in the days, but using this little trick on a Whirling Dragon Punch or something like that, for example, that hits very hard. Well, I was able to do some pretty special things in Mythic Plus. And I was quickly made a core member of the secret Discord's Mythic Plus team. What's more, I felt more comfortable around these people. I felt okay talking a little bit, voicing my concerns. Over the next few weeks of getting geared, I was finally close enough to start doing some bants. Bit of shit talk. We engaged a lot of contents, like, of DPS. Contests of DPS. Like, a lot. We would constantly pass whispers back and forth during raid, poking each other for our passes. Doing some competitive shit. It was good. Real good. Real fun. And I was getting even better by the day. Now, you probably all noticed that I have broken a rule. This was definitely a click. And I had joined it. And it was a click... That was obsessed with e to boot. But playing with good players. I liked it. Liked it a lot. We didn't have many issues. In fact, it got me getting over my anxiety and talking in voice chat during raids as well. And it wasn't long until we would shoot the shit in raids about DPS as well. What's more, we ended up getting Kenethal to join our guild from my old guild. On his Shadow Priest. Giving us enough to properly do Mythic. And we breezed through the first boss. Oh, Scorpion down. Tick. I got promoted to a full trial. And all was looking well. As before the end of the raid tier, Kenethal and I were promoted to full Guardians of the Guild. And Belshan was promoted to the ranged DPS officer. Though, it was said that his ranged DPS officer position was still a trial DPS officer ranged position... Ergo, he was not given the appropriate extra bonus loot priority to access the secret hidden cow level of loot. Not all in our guild was super peachy keen. One evening during farm, we had just down Mythic Chromatic Anomaly. And as you may remember, there was quite a coveted trinket there for Warlocks. Ooh, yes, there was. I think I wanted this on my mage. What's it called? Gamers! Gamers! What do we want? What are we after from there? Trinket, trinket, trinket. I'll let you know. The erratic metronome. An item Belshin had been looking for for the entire raid tier. And this was at... Where did... Uh, sorry, I'm going off track here. But where did that fucking Whispers in the Dark come from? Was it Gul'dan? Where was Whispers from? God, I loved Whispers. Mmm, private bloodlust. Yummy. 
Yummy. Was it Gul'dan? Oh, that was a good trinket. That was a good one. <laughs> I did like it. Ooh, good shit. Uh, <laughs> that was good shit. Bell should have been looking for this trinket for the entire raid tier. And this was our first drop outside of Heroic. He hurriedly rolled out of the 100, his loot priority, and got a 1! Woo! Which, as you recall, is the best roll since low roll wins. However, there was another Warlock in the group who also rolled for Biss. Out of 10. Wasn't an officer. Rolled out of 10. What's happening? Why is he rolling out of 10, we asked. Well, Wazin, our prestigious guild master and loot council member, said, He's a personal friend of mine. I can trust him to look after the team. He has been given extra loot priority. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. No matter, though. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. We can trust him. It's worth him having more loot, guys. We can trust him. But it didn't matter, of course. Right, guys? You know why? He only rolled a three. So, it will go to Belshin anyway, who rolled a 1. Until suddenly, the metronome was looted to the other Warlock. Wazen, our Supreme Leader, spoke up. Belshin, you have loot ban right now. Don't troll roll. Loot ban? Why? What? Why is he on a loot ban? What's going on? We started poking at Belshin for more information. In whispers, of course, of the guild policy you might remember. No drama in public. Eventually, Wazin spoke up. All your talk. All your talk of passing and DPS whoring during raid is hurting our raid team environment. We do this as not individuals, but as a team. And I would like to officially put a ban on a certain word. You will be loot banned if any of you says the word pass anymore. If I hear it, you're loot banned for the entire night. Well, there, I mean, seems fair. Seems fair, honestly. No, man. You're talking about passes during the raid? Crazy. What are you doing? Trying to improve? Idiot. Smug, honestly. Naturally, our little DPS monster passing click was pissed. Especially myself. I had been told that as I had said pass three times that night when discussing Scorperon and cheeses that happened during it, that I had been loot banned for three raid nights. <laughs> <laughs> but our feelings got expressed the only way we know how. By shooting the shit with each other. Whenever we were alone, we'd constantly joke about the ban on the word pass and mock Belshin for losing his metronome. The joke went so far that I ended up making an RPG maker game which served to meme on Wazin's nonsense. Because we were restricted for poking one another in the guild discord, we stopped going in there as much. Eventually, oh no, now you start, mm, you're online but you're not in discord, you're usually there? Eventually, we only started logging into the guild discord when it was raid time. I didn't care. Belshan, Kenethal, Hark, and, my, and our off-tank Evil B. They were hilarious. And they got me out of my little shell, my shy little hole. And let me feel like I was worth something. And together, we managed to kill up to Star Organ Mythic before Toom launched. Yeah. Over the course of Toom, I was loving life. Two-piece, four-piece, Holy Trinity Windwalker was the single most fun spec in World of Warcraft history. And I will die on that hill. Plus, I had finished some voice training to make my voice a bit deeper and more respectable. And it made me super confident in general. Can you do that? You can go and get voice training to get a deeper voice. Interesting. How squeaky were you? So you weren't even joking when you were saying it was full IIR, eh? Ah, that must have been really irritating. Especially around gamers. That must have been so annoying. Bosses died. Loot was had. Even if it was unfairly distributed, we all eventually got it. Things were good. Not the fairest system, but we're on the right road. Some interesting little cracks started to show later on in the tier of Tomb of Sargeras, as it did for many, many guilds. Though most notably, Evil B, during Tomb, 
was asked to re-roll four times. <laughs> While Wazin kept on with Prot Warrior. Evil B, our off tank, as it turns out, was required by the guild to, <laughs> as part of being a mythic raid off tank. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Wazin <laughs> Wazin only plays Prot Warrior because of course he's Guildmaster Raid Leader and Loot Council. He's very busy to maintain alts. So that's not happening. As a result then, Evil B the Off Tank had agreed that he was to maintain seven characters. Several of which weren't even tanks should the case for a single tank encounter rear its head. <clears throat> She also started becoming more bitter and silent over time. I wasn't sure why at the time. One night, though, Evil B, she snapped after a wipe. <laughs> Could you please tank swap properly for once, Wazin? It's not that hard. This was the only time since I have known Evil B that I ever heard her shout. And it quickly turned into tears and eventually to an official raid break. My DMs began blowing up with messages from her. She figured as the only other girl in the guild, I'd be able to lend an ear. And I did my best. It turned out, oh no, it turned out that for the past few months, she had been consistently called on the phone by Wazin. She had had to give her phone number as the off tank so that her and Wazin, apparently could discuss raid taxes as the tanking is so important. Sure, Wazin. Oh, by the way, you need to give me your phone number? Because we're the tank team. We might need to talk at any time. So you need to give me your phone number. <laughs> but it wasn't for what you think. Oh, right, okay. He would actually berate her angrily for her in-game mistake. In-game mistakes. <laughs> Telling her that she's the reason that we're failing to get cutting edge. He would also call her in the middle of the night for her time zone to demand M plus carries on his alts. She would she told me she was constantly anxious that the phone might ring and it him be him. And that she really doesn't want to be kicked because she likes the guild. But it was now costing her sleep and mental functions as she could barely get things done anymore. Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, we should have known from the uh, guild rules that Wazin may have been a bit of a control freak. There were some signs. There were. Yeah. I tried my best to listen. I was still young. I didn't know how to properly reassure her. What I should have done, mind you, was tell her to leave on the fucking spot, like you guys probably have assumed, and have everyone she likes follow and leave as well. But I didn't want to stir shit up. I was afraid of losing my first Mythic Guild and the people in it. I still really regret that night, because ever since then, I haven't been able to get her to open up about things. And I wonder to this day if there was anything else happening. The raid ended early, with Evil B and Wazin sitting in a channel on the Discord for hours. And the night ended with her messaging me, I'm sorry to have messaged you. Oh, that's really sad. Oh, man. He berated that girl for hours. You know it. You fucking know it. He berated that girl for hours and she didn't have the fucking strength at the time to go, fuck you, buddy. Bye. I wish I had done more. But I don't know if I could have at my age. How old are you? It's not mentioned it, right? So I tried to do my best to give her some fun to relax from everything, take her mind off things. I wish I could make it up to her somehow even now, but at any rate, the guild went on. Well, if she's listening, evil be. Still thinking on you. Interestingly, I had fallen under fire and scrutiny as well for another thing I did. I had requested to Wazin in an in-game mail, which is how we had to do things. It was guild regulation when he wasn't online. For a permission to use a different specialization in my pre-pull. Oh, yeah, I would have just said no. <laughs> I hate this shit. As there was an interesting trick you could do. When you switch specialization from Brewmaster to Windwalker, you could get one temporary Chi, which would fade after about 10 seconds out of combat. And also, Fortifying Brew didn't fade when you swapped Spect, which was later patched out by Blizzard. 
Why do I hate this? Okay, I'll tell you a little story, a side story to this tale. But there was a guy in my Cataclysm guild called... Uh, my guild was called Darkstorm at the time. Ex excellent guild. Excellent guild that's been around since vanilla uh, on Alakir. Uh, and we have this Fury Warrior. Irish guy. Really fun. Really uh, good bants. All that kind of stuff. But this Fury Warrior had a pre-pull system. Which was that he would equip all green and blue mastery gear some fury warriors might be able to back me up on this around the time um so you would put on this ridiculous mastery set that was just all like greens of the mastery or whatever so you just had a ludicrous amount of mastery and then you would press death wish during your pre-pull and then use a macro or the in-game swapper to swap all your gear to your real gear but it snapshotted your mastery which would give you a massive massive dps boost on your pull right no problem, whatever. Except for the times when somebody ninja pulled. Because he was min-maxing it to the point that he was swapping gear at like 1.2 seconds. To get the most out of this Death Wish cooldown. And occasionally someone will pull at like half a second. One second. When that happened, and he was then completely stuck in greens. Because his gear, because we were in combat, he couldn't swap his gear. He would just go AFK. And it killed my soul. It killed my soul. Honestly. He was like, there's no point in me even playing. I'm just going AFK. <laughs> uh, like, half of that, that's what he did. He just went AFK or he'd just go and kill himself. He, he only got away with it a couple of times before he was kicked, I think. I think they kicked him from the guild. Uh, but, like, pfft, not dealing with that shit. Like, no. And any, my rules are anything that fucks up the pull or anything that needs a 35-second pull timer... I'm not down with it, man. I'm not down with the uh, 35 second pull timers like some classes started utilizing at some point, swapping trinkets in and out and all that nonsense. <sighs> Any fonters? Oh, God. The fucking fonts, man. <sighs> anyway, there you go. So, anyway, you could start the pull as a high stamina brewmaster, pop fortifying brew, switch to windwalker during the pull, gaining a chi, and snap showing fortifying brew, and you have an extra chi for your pull, and blah, 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 you do more damage. Um,. As uh, you would do, you would do a, book, a much stronger opener. One of Wazin's friends thought this was hilarious, and on farm would often pull early, locking me on brewmaster for a fight. There it is, making me worthless for the pull, or would life grip me to interrupt the cast. <laughs> it's really funny, lol. Wazin thought this was hilarious as well. And when I protested this trolling, he told me I should be demoted for not being the proper spec and would give me minus one loot priority for any pulls that I ended up stuck in Brewmaster for. So I naturally didn't stop doing it <laughs> and just took the loot priority loss on the chin because fuck him. <laughs> the loot system was bull bullshit anyway. <laughs> I like you a lot. <laughs> Do you think I give a fuck? Your loot system is bullshit. I don't fucking care. Ooh, no. Minus one loop, Rary. Ooh. <laughs> so I'd only ever get pieces if all the officers were already geared. And I really didn't fucking care. Because when it did work, I popped off. <laughs> and eventually, the joke got stale. And they stopped doing it. So I won. But Wazin would remember this whole situation for much, much later, as I found out. Near the end of the tier, my life had taken a turn for the worse. Though I was in college, I wasn't an adult yet, so my parents were very strict about my behavior. I had been invited to travel with my college biology professor to the Galapagos Isles on a trip to examine the biodiversity there. That sounds hype as fuck. Translation. Uh, I would get to go on vacation with my classmates and look at frogs and shit, but it would be sunny. Nice. Yeah. And my parents used this trip as an opportunity to get me to stop playing World of Warcraft, something they had wanted to do for a very, very long time. Every time they had brought it up, the conversation ended with me in tears, begging them not to prevent me from spending time with my friends. Even though I was rather confident online, in person, I was still very, very shy. I was labelled often as a weeb, nerd, or a slur for gay people. <laughs> but then you followed it up with the cat eyes. <laughs> and I saw I never managed to get any friends my age. And any friends I did have, you couldn't find any weebs and nerds or any other gay people in, in high school. 
they were they, you were the you were the one that was out rock and roll you rock and roll you you were rocking it you would not you know you were rocking it i never managed to get any friends my age and any friends i did have were often much older than me but online i could be myself unabashedly sadly my parents didn't understand that and eventually they gave me the ultimatum you either quit world of warcraft or you're not allowed to go on the trip What choice did I really have? So I quit World of Warcraft two weeks before the trip. I'm going to get to play when I got back so long as I maintained a high 4.0 grade. I'm not sure how high that is. 4.0. However, one day, the day Antorus came out, my father randomly came downstairs as I was working on a paper for my coursework and unplugged my computer. He began shouting at me. Oh, I was so addicted to games that I am no longer allowed to use the computer, the television, or my phone anymore for any reason. Why the phone? Flappy bird. Son of a bitch. I tried to plead that I need the computer for coursework. It's not just a games machine. It didn't get through to him. And if I even so much as touched those electronics, I would not be allowed on the trip. I had been broken down by this and many other things not mentioned here, and I gave up mentally. But when I felt like I had nowhere left to go, I began seriously considering some very, very dark thoughts. Evil B. Evil B was there. <laughs> Round of applause for Evil B. Evil B convinced me to go and talk to someone and to go to the hospital. Find someone to help. Even though I had failed to comfort her when she needed it, Evil B saved my life. Right before being ferried off to the hospital, I messaged my guild, telling them that I can't make raid that night. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Shouldn't be laughing, because clearly you're in a bad place, but I know what's coming, and I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad <laughs> it's so bad i was placed i was placed in a two-month program for intensive mental therapy and after that i was allowed to go back home jesus they committed you wow hey i'm glad you got out well played i was no longer in college as i had to drop out due to my absence really for two months that sucks and of course the trip to the galapagos isles had long passed I was left with nothing as far as I was concerned. I was also permanently banned from talking to my online friends again, as my parents believed that they had goaded me into doing what I did. Though I was given the chance to explain the situation to one of them, I was also permitted some computer time every day, which I just played Dota. Your parents not coming across very well here at all. You were in two months psychiatric care, and they came back and gave you shit. <sighs> As a parent, this really hurts. However, after my parents learned it was an online game, I was banned from Dota as well. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Joke's on them, because I ended up devoting myself to Magic the Gathering. It gets so, <laughs> that's so much worse. No, not magic. No, <laughs> that's a way worse rabbit hole. Oh no! Oh god, a ball. It's so much worse. It's magic. Oh no. Because magic was offline, it was a hobby my parents approved of. They have no idea. They have no idea. And I began playing the game much more competitively than I had before. Actually, pulling decent winnings as well. But as time passed, I grew to be an adult. I was sent off to university proper. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you. That's good. What I'm saying thank you for. Congratulations after dropping out of college. Well done. Now that I had my own dorm room away from my parents, I walked into my dorm, turned on my computer, and installed World of Warcraft on the very first day. <laughs> Fuck you, bitches. <laughs> I'm a grown-up now. World of Warcraft. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> day one <laughs> to my surprise there they were 
My friends were there and they welcomed me back with open arms. Yeah, that happens. That happens. BFA was about to come out and they needed someone to fill out their M plus team. I was even reinvited to the NHS and was allowed to be immediately promoted to a normal trial given my experience. And so for a time, things were looking up again. I was doing well in coursework. I had my friends back. And what's more, we were killing some fucking raid bosses. I started to have dreams that maybe now we can go for cutting edge, which became all I wanted above anything else. Unfortunately, every raid tier at some point, our guild hit a wall. For Nighthold, of course, it was Star Augur. Ooh, oh, okay. All right, come on, team. All right, so Nighthold, Star Augur was the, Star Augur was the wall. What was the wall in Tomb of Sargeras? You're never going to guess this. <laughs> it's not one you expect. I'll tell you now, it's not Fallen Avatar or KJ. Yeah, it's not Avatar or KJ. Hajatan, Mistress? No. It's not Sisters. Good guess on Sisters. It's not Sisters. Uh, you're never going to get it because I don't know how the fuck. And there it is. Desolate Host. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what the fuck? Desolate Host. <laughs> <laughs> for real oof <laughs> that means you got past sisters could you do sisters could you do host before sisters i think you could i might be wrong on that i think you could you could go off to the right and you i think you could do host before sisters he's shitting on us no you could i think you could i think you could i can't remember anyway brad taurus all right so if they star auger desolate host and taurus where was the wall in Antorus? Yeah, we never did that, Crusher. <laughs> what was the wall in Antorus? This one is more obvious. Imanar. Yeah, Imanar the bridge. Yeah, it's always Imanar. What you need is someone awesome like JJ to suicide every single pull with speed potions. It makes life so much easier. Just send him to his death. <clears throat> but I thought we had a real chance if I put everything I had into helping the guild. I quickly was reminded that our raid team wasn't very good. <laughs> But I tried to help out other people, and Belshin was taking a similar approach. I ended up teaching our mages how to use Shimmer. <laughs> oh, you can press it while you're casting. <laughs> I taught our melee about positioning, and Belshin taught our hunters how to do more damage. Except one. The personal friend of Wazin, and a member of Wazin's little Mythic Plus team. Notably, Wazin, despite the guild rules, had a very strict team that he played with. And in fact, they never let anyone else play with them. I vividly recall once talking to Wazin's wife after raid and doing some island expeditions with her. <sighs> PTSD. Okay. <sighs> Which we bonded quite a lot over until right after Wazza whispered me never to speak to his wife again. He told me that I would get a minus two loot priority if I ever spoke to her. Is, there's no more details on that. Really? You're not going to expand on that? Fuck, man. Oh, come on. You can't leave us there. Why? What, what did you say? Oh, if you're listening, please tell us. I really want to know. <laughs> Blue bald. But this hunter, we're going back to the hunter friend. I don't give a shit about the hunter friend. What happened with the wife? I want to know what happened. But this hunter friend, he doesn't need a name. You can call him Mr. Sidewinders. <laughs> he was obsessed with the Sidewinder talent. And Belsham was desperately trying him to use and get him to use just any other talent that are better than Sidewinders. I don't know what the meta was at the time. But it sure wasn't fucking Sidewinders. In fact, Belshin ended up being challenged to prove it wasn't better. He, as the other hunter claimed, that was just log whoring. And in practical use, Sidewinders was better. That's right. I'll tell you one thing. Mythic Raiders can't trust what talents they're taking. They're always taking scam talents. 100% of the time. That's how we do it. All the time. And so one night on farm... He got a, got on a hunter alt in really awful gear. Took all the same talents except sidewinders and smashed that hunter to pieces. And shockingly, this didn't make Wazin upset. Wazin agreed with Belshin. Maybe it was due to us being stuck on mythic op opulence for three weeks. 
but he accepted that Mr. Sidewinders was not playing as part of the team. This caused a shouting match. Mr. Sidewinder stood up to Wazin as they were close friends. And Wazin lost the shouting match somehow. Mr. Sidewinders wasn't even punished. He managed to maintain his bonus plus one loot priority and was told that he can play his own build for as long as he wants because he knows Hunter very well. <laughs> the actual side effect of this, as you can probably imagine, is that word spread that our boy Belshin was now a shit stirrer. Telling people how to play. And as a result, he was punished. <laughs> of course. I got a permanent minus one loot priority. And a, and a rule that he was no longer allowed to critique fellow ranged DPS, nor give callouts, even though he was the ranged DPS officer. Because it was hurting the team. I like a ranged DPS over, officer who can't talk to the ranged DPS. That's really useful. That's fantastic. Oh, this is 10 out of 10. Waz's well, click ended up growing a little more intolerant of what they started to describe as elitist anti-team talk. They added a new rule alongside the pass rule. A universal minus one loot priority for the night. If they decided that things you were saying or doing would be considered elitist behavior. This, of course, enrolled the pass situation. Logs were now added to this discussion. Suggesting an alternative strategy was also considered elitist behavior. Or, if somebody wasn't performing well and you called it out, also elitist behavior. Though, during our month... Oh, I forgot. I actually, This thing is so mental, I forgot about the monthly two-hour meetings. <laughs> I forgot all about that. Though, during our monthly guild meetings, he seemed to publicly praise people who were improving and going far and above expectations. So to the people not in one of the two cliques, things seemed quite fine. But there was a war going on. A secret war. A cold war. Interesting, Wazin didn't know exactly who was in the elitist clique. But he knew it existed now. It's there somewhere. Until one day, a member of Wazin's clique, who had a habit for relentlessly trying to flirt with Evil B, managed to catch a glimpse of the Discord page for a moment during one of her streams. You put Discord on your stream, shaking my fucking head. Rookie. Rookie mistake. Absolute rookie mistake. This is why we have multiple monitors, alright? Rookie mistake. <sighs> that moment of that Discord popping up on that stream was screenshotted and the image was shared across the guild. Showing the names of every member inside the elitist clique, including myself. From there, things became a ticking time bomb. Wazin had for a long time wanted to remove and purge elitism so that the team can work together cohesively and finally fight to kill bosses as one instead of doing elitist things like chasing passes. And though he didn't publicly decry any member of the elitist clique, he would do what he could as the sole member of the loot council to change their attitudes. Even though personal loot was a thing, all tradable items were still subject to the same loot rules. And because of this, not a single member of the elitist clique received a piece of loot that was rolled for. So long as Wazin was watching, which interestingly included Evil B, the person who actually told Wazin who won the loot. Oh god, the person helping with the loot? Who manages the loot system is not allowed any loot for being elitist. <laughs> the person who manages this whole loot system can't get any loot. <laughs> However, this tentative peace, this Cold War didn't last for long. As once the dumb Ashara raid with the dumb fucking Benthic gear came out, things hit the fan. During a discussion about whether or not to do a normal run of the new raid tier, a wall of text by Wazin's wife... Oh, shit. Here we go. Wazin's wife dropped in officer chat. It was so monumental, I saved it in full. Okay. Here we go. The officers did, in fact, vote to start with one run through the content on normal. 
We even actually discussed that Hark would be against this course of action. We balanced our decision around a few points, one of which was to allow some of our teammates to sweep up extra gear, especially those who are switching characters going into the next tier of content. You can't throw a fit over a vote if you weren't part of it. Not to pussyfoot around. What I see as the heart is the issue that there is a small group of individuals who crave harder content and are increasingly passive-aggressive about raiding difficulty, to the detriment of the team. Belshan, the author, Kenethal, Hark. These four are the top of my mind when we slow down or progress comes to a stop. And they're also those who tend to skip out on content they don't want to do. There always seems to be a reason that they can't show up on the nights where we're doing fights where they have no interest, no gear, or no progression to be had. Whether this is fact or imagination doesn't matter because that's the optics that are being presented by this click. <sighs> is this true? Did you start dodging farm night? Did you? Did you? Did you start dodging? Because that's where the clicks start to fall apart. Was that what you were doing? I don't know. I was furious. Okay, she has a response for us. She has a response. None of us had missed more than a handful of raid nights in two expansions. And any amount of passive aggressiveness was expressed through internal shit talking. Any talk of progression was usually meant to encourage and congratulate people for getting as far as we have. See, that could be construed in a number of ways. <laughs> With encouragement to go on further. I had no idea where this message was coming from. But the messages kept coming. Oh, she's carrying on. <clears throat> we are... This is from the wife. We are hitting a decision point. Where that small group of certain people... There it is. Perfect. Will continue to get increasingly disenchanted and angry with our pace. Because it's not hitting their elitist goals. It's okay to have different goals. What is absolutely unacceptable is to throw up wave after wave of passive aggressiveness with people on both sides of the divide throwing temper tantrums instead of just reevaluating re why they're voluntarily a part of this team. There were nights where the team wanted to do mythic content, blew through easier bosses and then couldn't do the progression targets because we had 17 or 18 people in the team. Was it worth letting down those 18 people? I hope so. Because I, for one, didn't particularly enjoy sitting there hoping we'd get a pug to fill an absentee slot. At the end of any day, any tier, or any expansion, all I want is to be able to play a game that I genuinely enjoy in the company of people I enjoy. So I think that answers our earlier question that this team that never benches anybody aims to have exactly 20 people which is fucking madness madness because that never happens and if someone takes a day off you don't get to raid and you don't get to play and that fucking sucks i could happily be doing lfr level content with our team and still be happy i really could this endless bickering over content level is to be blunt exhausting and ridiculous more time and energy is wasted on debating the difficulty level soothing frayed nerves and applying ointment on fiery assholes from being butt hurt over the same things that is put into actually playing we're all better than this either cut the shit or there's the door we have the team for a very successful and fun tier but only if we can get out of our own way p.s at wazin and at hark it's time it's, it looks like it's time to start getting naked and fighting i'll bring lawn chairs and popcorn to watch now, Hark, the melee officer, shared with us his reply. I have to disagree with a couple of things. One, it's not just the four of us who want better progress. And two, people speaking against something they feel isn't right for the team isn't exactly what the team needs. Yes, men are spineless. Speak your mind because nothing changes unless you do so. Also, I will point out that the guild's rule one you must always look for the best in another member of the team and will never judge them unjustly. Has not been upheld here at all. It appears that our other teammates have taken what I said for what it was and didn't get butt hurt by me suggesting we do get better, that we do heroic. 
You're the only one who's deciding to whip their dick out and measure. If you want my resignation from the officer team, ask for it. Then you will not have to worry about someone pushing us to be better anymore. <laughs> now, as you can imagine, guys, this did not go down well. <laughs> In severe punishment, Hark was given minus one loot priority for a whole month. <laughs> but he wasn't demoted from officer. I was fed up. Of course we're fed up. How ridiculous is this? I felt like I had given so much time and effort to the guild and I deserved a little more respect than I was given. So I decided to go to the top. I'm going to Wazin. Questioning him on whether I had been... Is it? Have I been passive aggressive? Have I missed any raids? Because I don't think so. But I was angry, so I didn't care. I showed him a sheet where every single raid absence was tracked and demanded he point out where I had arbitrarily chosen not to show up for raid. Even the optional normal mode raids we did for alts and socials. He couldn't. We had an exact register. <laughs> you kept a register? <laughs> of course you kept a register. As each one was catalogued with a reason. And my raid absences approved ahead of time. All except for one. My psychiatric hospitalization. On the, on the register... My absence to be hospitalized was listed as sudden and unapproved and hurt progression. In red. <laughs> you are fucked. It's in red. Bro. <laughs> You're fucked. It's in red. <laughs> it's in red. Oh, you know it's real. <laughs> He's turned red on in the Excel. Shit, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> I tried to argue it. There's no way I could have known I was going to be committed to a hospital. Surely, being taken into care is a good reason for not being at the raid. To which he elegantly responded. In your case, it's different. But let's hypothetically say a family member of mine died. And I couldn't show up to work for a few weeks. While that situation may appear justified to me. To everyone else. The optics of the situation are different. Who? <laughs> Who sees that as different? <laughs> to them. It's no different than if I'd just gone on vacation. And here. The optics of the, situ the, optics of the situation are what matter. So no, in our view, your hospitaliz hospitalization was not an excused absence. Well, there it is. <laughs> well, there it is, you know. <laughs> your mother died, might as well be on holiday. Regardless of how you spin it, Karen, you're not in work. So what do you want me to tell you? You see what I mean? To me, you're just not here. So what difference does it make? <clears throat> I broke. It broke me. I'm not going to lie and tell you it didn't. It did. I broke at this. I wanted to rage and scream and call Wazen out for being the biggest asshole I've ever spoken to. But then I remembered drama time. Oh shit, don't bring me into this. I, no, no, no. <laughs> Look. No, man. <laughs> okay, maybe it's a good thing. No, maybe it's a good thing. Oh shit. <laughs> okay. I remembered drama time. And how these situations end. And I chose to act differently. All I said was, I see. In that case, then, I'm leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> Fucking praise the purpose, baby! Woo! That's it right there! That's it! Yes! <laughs> Score one! Score one! Aha! Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> we did it, team! That's all you guys as well! We did it! We did it, team! Drama time! Broy home! <laughs> oh, shit. I've seen this before. I'm out of here. <laughs> Bye! Bye-bye. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's all been worth it. It's all been worth it up to this point. Thank God.
If only you'd recognized it in paragraph one like we did. <laughs> that would have been even better. If you would have sent me the drama story saying, so I had this interview and they told me these were the rules, so I left. I'd have been happy to read that story too. <laughs> I'd have been more than happy to read that story as well. Uh, okay. Uh, let's stop patting ourselves on the back for a minute, team. The story goes on. Wazen then repeated a mantra of his, one of his philosophies he liked to use in our two-hour guild meetings. Well, if things ever take you back to us, you will all be, be always be welcome in the NHS. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I did what was expected of me. I wrote a short resignation message in the guild about how much I loved our time together, and I am sad to have to go. I received a few messages in kind wishing me well. I was later told by Hark, the melee officer, that my leaving, my leaving actually took a lot of heat off him, as Wazin could use me now as a scapegoat for being the toxicity of the guild. Oh, you're poison. Look at you. Poison. So he banned me and deleted my farewell message, and the guild's optics were now what he described as best in slot. <laughs> And so, in my absence, the guild pushed on. Yeah, that's what happens when you leave. Look, that's not on you. Everybody who ever leaves any company or any workplace is 100% responsible for all problems that have ever happened. That's that's just the way it goes. You're not there to defend yourself. That, that, that was Jennifer's job. I don't know what to tell you. I asked Jennifer to do that. And she's left. What do you want me to tell you? It's not my fault. I didn't fucking do it. <clears throat> It took me quite a while to get over this. But eventually it passed. And I can look back and laugh at how fucking ridiculous this all was. Things just exploded so quickly and it's amazing to me that suggesting this mythic progression guild skip normal mode for a tier was what things broke, th what broke things down. I tried going back for a short time in the Shadowlands and ended up raiding with Hark, who made a new guild with a bunch of refugees from the NHS. Which let me relive a few weeks of glory before all the information about Blizzard came out. And the new guild had a mass exodus of players, myself included. And from the grapevine, I've heard that the NHS have become a normal mode progression guild. And its new mantra is, we are elitist free. <laughs> Progress free as well, which, you know, hand in hand. Nowadays, my life's taking me in a weird direction. My mental health disorder has made it difficult to go to university. I've had to abandon my dreams of being a doctor. Oh. I recently begun streaming. Uh, and after a year and a half of working on it, I've got a modest to 30 to 4 average viewers. Okay. Be careful. That can be hard. I was accused of uh, endorsing uh, misogyny and rape culture this week. So, I mean, that can have a toll on your mental health as well. Just be careful, okay? To so anybody who wants to get in the streaming space. I'm, I'm being serious right now. Drama Time's a fun show. But let me tell you, and my staff will back me up on this. Anybody who decides to get into this world, it is not easy mentally. It's a fun job. It's the best job. I ain't complaining. But there's a there's a high, higher and higher every year amount of suicide in streamers and things. That's a very real problem. Just be careful, okay? Just be careful. It's rising every year, as are the number of people streaming. But be careful. <clears throat> and it feels really nice to have people joining me. And the streaming has filled a big need for socialization that raiding can no longer fill. Though the MMO itch is a hard one to scratch, so I started playing Final Fantasy XIV. Joining a free company with my friend, and we've been raiding together in a super chill static for a little bit. I managed to clear through E12s and get halfway through Ooh. -woo. This time, though, I decided to be a healer to stop myself from retreating into what I used to be. Going back to my old messages and DMs makes me cringe real bad, so I'm trying my best to never be an elitist again. But I'm still obsessed with log analysis and improving as much as I can. And alongside my friend Kohila, we're super excited to go into Endwalker together to seek a little bit of that glory I used to crave so much. Thank you so much for reading. I hope my story was able to give you guys a little bit of a chuckle, and I hope everybody listening has a super amazing day. Big heart. P.S. Here's a pic of my FF14 character, since it's mandatory to include, and one of me doing my darling Kohila together. Does it have your name? Of course. Okay. What race does our author play? <laughs> Any guesses out there? Any knowers? Any knowers? Any knowers? It is, of course, the unquestionable, the indisputable Lalafell. <laughs> what else would it have been? 
Of course, it's the Lala. Yes, you knew it. You knew it as well. It's the Lala. You knew it. There was no doubt in anybody's mind. It's the Lala fell. 100% every single time. Oh, my. Oh, God. What a tale. What a tale. That was a journey, wasn't it? But round of applause. I, I hope things pick up for you, IRL. Uh, I have missed three missed calls from my wife uh, and my son. Uh, <laughs> so I need to love you and leave you. Uh, tomorrow, though, we should be streaming on Saturday. I'm not sure what time. Uh, I am going on a mystery night out tonight. It's my birthday next week, but I'm busy. So my wife is taking me on a birthday night out tonight. Uh, in the next like half hour, I think. So I'm going to love you and leave you. So we should have a stream tomorrow. And on Monday, Final Fantasy XIV continues. The break time is over. Endwalker is relaxing. Get ready. So we're going for a pint and a pie. And I'll see you. All right. Fucking hell, man. This place is looking like shit. I'll see you in a bit. Bye-bye.